The Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Hey, everybody, we're back. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. I am happy to see my longtime buddy, Chris Burnham. It's been forever. It's good to see you, man. Hey, how are you doing, bud? I'm doing all right, man, all things considered. How uh, how was your COVID year? It was, <laughs> it was a nightmare. I mean, we, uh, we, we, we made it out, uh, you know, with no one getting sick, but it was, good. I mean, I've, I've got two little kids and, you know, I've, I've got a two and a half year old. He's spent... 40% of his life, uh, you know, seeing no one else, but you know, yeah, me, his mom, and his brother is a nightmare. <laughs> no, I understand, man. Have you guys, have you and your wife, have you had a chance to get vaccinated yet? No, we're we're in Kansas, we're like, we're uh, we're currently in stage three, and we're you know, a, a healthy, you know, adults under 65 is stage five, so it's like, I don't know, at some well, point, yeah, no, I understand, I understand, I'm uh. <laughs> Uh, they just started doing my my uh, group uh, this uh, this week, so I'm you know trying to get an appointment and get nice. it done. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, you know what are you gonna do? Yeah, get, get out once you get it. Get out there and just start French kissing everyone. <laughs> if I looked like you, Burnham, I would certainly do that. <laughs> but uh, I don't think anyone's anxious to French kiss me yet, so that's all right. <laughs> right. But you know. Um, Dude, I, I, I know, you know, we were just talking briefly before we started uh, off the air and, you know, it's a weird time and we'll see how things work out as far as live events. I'm optimistic now that the vaccine is in better hands from right. a distribution standpoint. Right. So, I, I, you know, right. so hopefully uh, things will normalize uh, sooner yeah. than later. You know, what else can you do? So, you know, but in the meantime, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see you and uh, we're here to talk. Uh, about one book you got coming out this week, uh, the last chapter of the second volume of Die, 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 number 14. Yes. Very cool. You and Kirkman. You know, I love this book because it absolutely fits both your style and Robert's style. And I know you, you guys have worked before. Have, have you guys worked before? Uh, no, we've been buddies for a while, but okay. I don't I don't know. Yeah, you, we've never we've never done anything before. This was the first thing. Okay, because like I think of things like really going back with Robert, things like Brit and um, uh, Battle Pope and things like that that had that kind of hyperkinetic action to it, and you with things like Nixon's Pals and Officer Down and things. I mean, 
I really think you're you guys are the right guys to do this kind well, of book. Yeah, so, like we I, I remember back in the Nixon's Palace days, I sat next to him at some uh, like a Seattle convention or whatever, and I was his line. Uh, he and you know he and uh, you know Corey's line was like snaking right in front of my table. And I was sniping people that were sitting in front of me. I was like, hey, if you like Invincible, but you'd like this too. It's the same sort of thing. And I, uh, you know, I sold out all my stuff. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, man. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was captive audience. You got to take advantage. <laughs> no, and, you know, I've, I've seen that happen where the guy next to a guy that has a, you know, a bigger profile and stuff. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, kind of snakes around your table. Yeah. And I've seen that happen a lot and everything. So that's good. I'm glad you were yeah. able to kind of. <laughs> yeah, it, it can work. I sit next to Katie Cook at uh, San Diego. And there's one of my favorite people, no crossover between our audience. <laughs> no, I hear you, man. No, no, absolutely. That's that's very true. So yeah. and no, you're both good people. Absolutely. That's that's cool. Uh, how's everybody? And again, I know you're probably dealing dealing with them from a distance. But do you mm -hmm. talk to uh, the other KC people and everything? Uh I've I, uh, I've seen Dennis Hopeless a couple times. But the last time I saw him, I was I randomly ran into him at the Home Depot. Actually, we were we were both masked up, and I just saw his you know beautiful hair. I was like, is that Dennis Hopeless? And we talked about you know <laughs> drain snakes or whatever the hell we were buying. <laughs> oh my! How domesticated you both are yeah, now. Really. That's awesome. That's fantastic, man. Well, die die die. It's it's a it's a really fun book in terms of uh, you got a secret cabal. You got you got uh, essentially almost a dirty tricks department. Yeah, out of out of the government and everything, kind of fixing things that they couldn't obviously take care of through through normal channels, which yeah. is always fun. Yeah, and right. that's that's cool. And uh, man, I, I love I love Obama's uh, presence. Oh man, in, what, in the story, what a turn! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we put him in. So we've been we've been working on this book, you know, for for years and years, I took kind of a extended uh, you know, paternity leave with both my kids. So we've been, you know, it's taken us forever for this, uh, you know, 14 issues. Uh, so we started at the, be at the, like the very beginning of the Trump administration. We're just like, we don't want to put this guy in our comic book. And it's like, we don't want to put, like, it's just seemed too weird to put like Hillary Clinton in either. So it's like, what, that, what the hell are we going to do? We thought about like, are we just going to do like the, like they would do in the old comics where you just do like a, like a faceless guy from the back. And it's like, is that JFK? Uh, so, <laughs> so we just put Barack Obama in there just because what the hell else were we going to do? And then in issue eight or whatever it was, we revealed that this isn't some like goof that he actually, you know, launched a coup and overthrew. We, I don't think we ever mentioned Trump by name, but he, we, we make a couple, you know, mentions. Uh, yeah. There's that crazy, crazy military coup. And he's got like the black power fist standing on a tank. It's crazy. <laughs> Well, and, you know, based on uh, the cover that Grace's issue 14 that comes out tomorrow and you gave me a chance to look at it, uh, you had me at hello at the cover yeah, we... <laughs> and, and even and even more so inside the book. And I don't want to necessarily spoil, yeah. but uh, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, homages to uh, one of my favorite 70s comics and uh, it'll be yeah. very, yeah, really, the, the cover says it all, uh, you know, really on its own. And in fact, I should probably get a picture of the cover for you, uh, everybody. While we're talking, go ahead and uh, talk. Oh, you know, oh, talk got, about the I issue while, while I'm doing that. Up, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it in a moment. But no, tell us. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so for the over the course of the series, it starts as kind of a you know like a dirty tricks political you know action thriller, and then slowly over the course of the series, we've been dropping in these weird you know conspiracy theory uh, bits, and then it turns out like you know are aliens real and you know sort of thing, and like is that sword magic? And over the course of the series, it's all gotten you know, crazier and crazier until like uh, we we just wrapped up the big like politics story. And so then just the crazy space alien story has taken over for the last issue. And it's, <laughs> I mean, the, the cover says it all. It's you know, Barack Obama in an intergalactic boxing match against a bunch of, you know, demon aliens. And it's, I don't know, it's crazy. It's, uh, <laughs> it's utterly preposterous. <laughs> like if you read the first issue and then the fourth, the 14th issue, like there's, I mean, there's characters that are in both, but there's like the tone of it is just completely flipped on its head. It's wild. I hear you, man. And there it is. There's the cover and uh, yeah. <laughs> and more more great scenes in it and stuff. And yeah, man, it's uh, it's uh, it's a fun match. And I'm uh, I was intergalactic boxing. You always have me yeah. at a low. Yeah, right. When it, when it comes to that stuff, and also just the fact that it's Obama. I mean, echoes of Superman and Ali right. fighting fighting the aliens they did in their uh, treasury sized. Uh, Neil Adams comic with uh, Dennis O'Neill back in the day. 
Yeah, you know, I've, I've never read that until I was drawing this issue. Like I was always aware of it, but as a kid, as a kid, I heard about it and it just sounded so dumb to me. Like I was like, Superman can obviously beat up Muhammad Ali. Like, what? How's this a fight? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, it just didn't. I never investigated. Uh, it just sounded uh, sounded corny. But man, that is some good comic books right there. <laughs> it really, it really is. And I mean, you obviously uh, pay homage to that fantastic wraparound cover mm -hmm. that you know. Uh, originally, Kubert did it, and then they had Neil kind of clean it up, and then oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. That's funny. Yeah, and it's and it's amazing because a lot of the celebrities that are in the original wouldn't sign off on it. Be like, I don't want to be in this, mm -hmm. so they had to put like a mustache on John Wayne, right. and you know, just like crazy shit to like make it not look like the people that they were and everything. Yeah. So no, it's great. Are there aliens beyond characters in the book that you know are from uh, other books that you guys have done? Uh, there's, there's Alan, the alien from invincible is in the crowd. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, the nameless is in there. I can't, there's, there's, I mean, it's, it's, it's packed with stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of characters from stuff that Robert and I <laughs> have actually done. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, but that's I'm, I'm great not... that you both even have, you know, Alan yeah. alien and, and, and nameless in there. So that's cool. Yeah. That was fun. You know? And, uh, it's funny, Jimmy Carter uh, was in the original. Yes. And he's, yes. he's still with us. So uh, I threw Jimmy Carter in there looking, you know, a little worse for the wear because he's 50 years older or whatever. Oh, my God. He's, yeah, he's in his mid-90s, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jesus, the guy, like, beat a cancer scare a couple years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I mean uh, seriously, I, 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 I've always loved Carter. Uh, okay. I, you know, again, the he had bad timing with the economy and – yeah. Certainly, you know, unfortunately, the hostage situation didn't help him out any and everything, but he's one of the greatest ex-presidents out there. Yeah, phenomenal. In I terms of peanuts are good for you, right? I, apparently, you know, I guess so. <laughs> Eat your legumes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Who knew? You know, but uh, no, it's really, I, I, I enjoy the book. I think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of insane violence in there as well. There should be. Oh, uh, oh yeah. That was, <laughs> when I read the script, I was like, oh, are we really, what's <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare. That's what it's like. Mike Norton <laughs> jumping in and asking, what's it like to know Mike Norton? Oh, oh God. What, Seriously. I love, I love yeah. that Mike Norton. Dude, I swear. And again, I mean, you know, I, I miss like the crew in terms of yourself and Scotty and Norton and Celia and everybody and just being, you know, hanging out like we did, you know, yeah. 15 years ago. It yeah, was a lot of fun. I can't, man. It's weird that. It it really seemed like that was the present for a very long time. And now it's kind of receding to be like, oh shit, that's a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, and you know, you've been America's guest. You've been popping around the country yeah. in various <laughs> various cities, post Chicago. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those, those some good shit. Yeah, just very good, uh, you know, very good group to grow up with. And uh Henry uh Henry uh, Barajas uh wants to say that he used to see you at Ralph's. That's true. Very cool. Oh man, Ralph, so Ralph was good. I used to, I used to see I saw Hank, Hank a couple of times. I I used to see this one dude who was a, uh, and this is not even a story. Just some guy that drove for like DoorDash or one of these, you know, one of these food yeah. delivery. Yeah. I like I would I would see this random dude like three times a week just at at Ralph's or like the dollar store or whatever. It's just like, well, I guess I'm accidentally best best friends with this dude now. Did you have conversations with him? Yeah, oh yeah, we talk about okay. you know, all sorts of nonsense. Like I, you know, I saw him more than basically anyone except for you know the family and Tony Fleece. Tony Fleece, excellent man. Uh, Parker wants to know if we're done yet. We we just started. We just started, Parker. Hurtful. I'm telling you, man. Uh, well, it's it's very it? nice that Jeff Parker's taking time out of his busy evening to watch us have a nice conversation. And and you know he'll be on on two in two nights. Uh, we're doing uh, the he, me, him, Gabe Hardman, uh, Andy, Andy Parks, um, and a few others are doing uh, a rewatch of the original Outer Limits from the '60s, the black oh, nice. and white show. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're 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 cracking up, and it's hilarious because we'll we'll do this for like an hour, and then we'll talk for two hours afterwards and just yeah. hang out and bullshit and stuff. Nice. And really, during lockdown, I it's my favorite. Like I'll I'll literally be up to like four in the morning talking to these guys yeah. and I don't care because it's like the best night of my life. You know, it's nice. so is, is it true that Parker is bringing back the Interman? That's the rumor right here is that he's finally oh, bringing back the Interman. Gee, I sure hope so, Jeff. <laughs> that would be lovely. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. Um, 
God, everyone's chiming in, and it's good to see everybody. John Lehman is uh, joining oh, us. Oh, Jesus Christ. And he wants to hear more about the dollar store guy, of course. Very good. Very, very handsome gentleman, the dollar store guy. <laughs> Let's go. Cool. Ramsey has an interesting observation. I hear that Grant Morrison sends concept art with his scripts. Is there a fun back and forth between you when visualizing a story? P.S., I dig your insightful Lee Kirby FF deep dives on Twitter. I agree. Well, well, thank you. For, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, uh, uh, once in a while, he would send over a concept, uh, a costume design. Like I think uh, uh, when Damien had that weird uh, red Robin outfit or whatever, whatever it was called for that one uh, issue four, I guess. I think he sent over a design for that. For the most part in our series, uh, the costumes are already set, but he would send over uh, cover sketches for, I don't know about every issue for at least half the issues. He had an idea for the cover. Okay. And he's a, he's a super good artist. I was going to ask what kind of artist yeah. is he? He's, he's great. Like I, if he, you know, wasn't so lazy or whatever, <laughs> he could have done it for real, but he was, he was smart enough to, uh, you know, not do the hard work anymore. <laughs> no, I get it. Honestly, um, for, for an amateur artist, I always say Jeff Johns is really surprisingly a really good artist and stuff. When oh, he I've does. Never, oh, that, that sounds cool. I've never seen. Yeah. He'll do, co he'll do cover sketches for people. And it's like, that's really good. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's not quite, you know, if he weren't Jeff Johns, I don't know if he'd be published right. by DC or Marvel, but that said, uh, he certainly would be getting work. So it's kind of neat. Oh, Riley Brown is here. Oh, Wants Jesus. to know who's a better guest, Riley Brown or Chris Berman. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer is clear. <laughs> yeah, Grant, Grant did a cover for, I think it was the last issue of Batman Inc. Or maybe it was an issue of Batman Inc. He did a variant cover. Very, I mean, if it was anyone other than him, I think you'd be a little annoyed at, at the quality of the art. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but it was, you know, Grant drawing it pretty cool. I understand. So, oh, like, wait, wait, let, oh, me, let me pause. Go ahead. Uh, Grant is non binary. I'm sure. I've been uh, screwing up their pronouns this whole time. It's it's. I've ha had a very hard. Oh, time. is Grant they now? Uh, Grant, Grant to stay. I've been having a very oh, hard I, time. I, of, of, well, I mean, I didn't realize Grant identifies yeah. now as nine bar uh, binary, and, right, and so, we, uh, we, mean, we mean no disrespect. Right. Uh, by calling they yes. him. Right. I will. I, I will him. do my best. It's 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 hard to get all the all the switches flipped. No, it's no. I understand. What is? Uh, give me the differences between a Grant script. Uh, you know, a Joe Casey script. You've done a lot of great books with Joe, mm -hmm. and uh, and now Robert. Uh, I would say of the three, Roberts are the most uh, bare bones. Uh, just kind of here, you know. Here's what you know. Here's the you know, exact panel count. Here's the exact words that are going to be in the book. Uh, it's you know very well fully fleshed out. And I think if you gave it to if you gave it to just about, I don't know about anyone, but if, if you gave it to, you know, six different artists, I think you would get very similar uh, art back. Uh, uh, Joe and Grant are a little more uh, free form. Like at the, at, at the beginning of the script, they'll kind of say, here's what we're, you know, here's, here's what I'm thinking of. You know, here's, here's the music I'm listening to, or, you know, here, here's, here's movies that this reminds me of, or whatever to, to, you know, get your, you know, head in the mood. And then, from there, the uh, you know the panel descriptions and the action is a little more you know free flow, and it's you know leaves a little bit more up to the uh, to the artist interpretation, which can be great. But uh, uh, if, for an artist who's not ready for it, you, you get a lot of Grant Morrison comics that don't make any sense, and that's the reason is because because Grant is uh, you know giving the artists a lot of rope to hang themselves with, and sometimes they <laughs> sometimes they really do it. That's cool, though. That's no, I think that's fun. And again, uh, I think you you've been dealing with a lot of writers like Grant in terms of just their weird off the wall guys. I mean, Joe Casey, I love every time you guys get together, whether it's Nixon's pals or officers, officer down. Uh, I mean, that's what comes to mind immediately. You've done. Have you done more than those two? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. We We almost did. We almost did an officer down axe cop little crossover. It just we just couldn't make it work for whatever dumb reason. Oh. But uh, <laughs> that was I don't know. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was a couple of years ago. That would have been funny. That would have been natural, absolutely, man. Here, Tony Fleece is here. Tell John about the poop. Tell me yeah. about the poop, please. Uh, that's uh, no. Uh, I've got a two and a half year old son, and there was a, a bit of a bit of a poop situation today. I don't know if you need to know the specifics, but it was a Ooh. rough one. <laughs> About two and a half, that happens. Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, carpeted floor. That. Oh. <laughs> well, 
all right, that's you know that's why they got uh, Febreze <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and the like and everything. So start mm-hmm. scrubbing. I understand. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, it was, and it then was memorable. Oh, and then oh. Parker wants to know: uh, uh, Do you miss Drew? I, and I don't sure know. do. Who is which Drew? Uh, that is Drew Edward Johnson, one of my favorite people in the world. Drew, if you're listening, I love you. I'm sorry that I threatened to eat you and or your children. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like it. Well, it's yeah. We, we... <laughs> other other people know what I mean. <laughs> Um. Oh wow, Matthew Brake says this isn't about poop, but I can't wait to hear you talk about Nameless. Well, let's talk about Nameless, indeed. Fantastic yeah. collaboration. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I don't know. I, ask a question. I mean, Nameless is super gross. I think about it. I think <laughs> the, 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 the thing, the thing I, I, that I think I'm, I'm most proud about it is that it starts off gross, and somehow we kept upping the ante every issue until like the final climax of issue six is like the grossest thing I've ever drawn and one of the grossest things I've ever seen. And it's just like, I don't know how we did it. Cause just about every issue was just like, I don't know how we're going to ever make it worse than this. And we kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of turns into a bit of a, you know, a competition between the two of us, like a friendly one. Uh, you know, I'll get the, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get the script, the script in from Grant. And I'm always like, this is great. You do not get to have the best idea in this thing just because you wrote it and so i'm always you know you know trying to you know trying to you know one up the ideas by making you know weirder more depraved or whatever and so just got you know you batted back and forth until that you know that great scene with the hammer in issue six just like this is this is amazing it actually thematically works and there's like some accidental foreshadowing a couple pages before it's awesome like super good moment very good comic good work nameless There you go. And man, people are really uh, coming out and asking about Grant. Um, first, uh, Dennis says, uh, been loving Die, Die, Die. And he plans to collaborate with Grant again in the future. Uh, nothing set in stone, but we, we talk uh, we talk every once in a while. We both, we, we love working with each other. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, finding the finding the time, finding the, the project, whatever. They're very busy with, uh, last time we took a swing at it, uh, they were super swamped with working on TV shows. I was just like, well, fair enough. <laughs> I understand. You know, uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, uh, Mike Schelling at DC was like, hey, anybody? And he's like, you know, I know you know a lot of people. Uh, is there anyone that I can help you get that you don't normally talk to? I'm like, get me Grant. And so he had Grant and Liam on together to talk about Green Lantern. That's, and other, that's other a miracle. Than, <laughs> honestly, I know. And other than a 10-minute video conversation I had with Grant – 13 years ago about all-star Superman in 2008. It's uh-huh. the only time I've ever had an on the record conversation with Grant and it was fantastic. And, and I would have, I mean, you know, there's a million things to talk about with Grant and I felt, you know, I did, but I didn't want to leave Liam out as well. And I really right. love talking to Liam as well. So we had a nice, like three, three person conversation, but yeah, it couldn't have been sweeter and it was really great. And again, a guy I hadn't seen in years and it's just, you know, and it was just on the phone, unfortunately. But yeah, he's, he was great. He was he was very sweet about everything. I, I'm surprised so. Grant was able to make <laughs> the iPad the phone work. <laughs> not, not not very tech savvy that one. <laughs> I understand. No, but I, again, I, I, I had I to was... call them a cab one time. We were we were uh, we had like a script meeting or something in uh, in their apartment, talking over an issue of Nameless or whatever. And as I'm on the way out the door, Grant's like, oh, "I hate to ask you this, can you?" You figure out how to get this cab to pick me up at 6.15 tomorrow morning. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> He's used to being, together. you know, on, on the boonies and everything. Literally on the boonies. So, yeah, yeah. I, I do understand. Michael yeah. says, uh, Namus is one of the few comics that actually scared me. Great work. Thank you. That's cool. And uh, before I get to Ramsey, uh, Matthew says, were you intrigued by all the occult symbolism of na- nameless uh are you into any of that stuff with morrison uh i mean i did a fair amount of you know, re- you know reading you know a lot of the stuff that grant was uh was was referencing i don't really i don't really get into it too much in retrospect i wish i had just gone whole hog with it and just you know screw it let's learn what an upside down tarot means and just like you know, pour blood on the floor and do the whole you know what i don't know anything about it uh in retrospect, that would have been fun to just like really, you know, go for it. But I, you know, treated it more just like a, you know, a 
comic book with a lot of you know detailed research to do rather than a, a, a lifestyle switch to, <laughs> to go through. But uh, you know, it would have been it would have been fun to lose my mind a little bit, but uh, I did not. I understand. Ramsey wants to know he loved your uh, New Mutants E for Extinction story, the riff on it, I should say. Oh, right. Did you hear back uh, from Grant what he thought about it? Uh, I hope he never reads it. Oh, I hope they never read it. Um, uh, I, I've not heard back. I can't imagine Grant would read such a thing. <laughs> I don't know. No, I understand. You know, if, if they read it, I hope they like it. But I mean, who knows? There's there's a lot of comics out there to read that aren't, you know, riffing on your own stuff. I can appreciate that. Um, you've spent a lot of time away from DC and Marvel, and have had great collaborations with Grant and Kirkman and, and mm -hmm. Joe and everybody. Um, are you? Uh, is the door still open? Should a, a DC or Marvel thing come up? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I talk with uh, I talk with people at the DC a lot and Marvel people uh, occasionally. So uh, I can't announce anything right now. But uh, you know, DC work in the uh, you know not too distant future for sure. I'm still still friends with those people. Although it's a bummer that so many of them got let go because there there are a lot of my uh, you know a, a lot of my comic book favorites are uh, you know in the wind now is very, it's a, it's a, it's not going to be the same. It's a bummer. No, I hear you, man. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you feel, you know, Fletch is one of my guys, Fletch Chiffon. I, I, I randomly came across that email today that I somehow like was lost in the inbox. When, when I was finding those PDFs for you today, that one came up. I was like, Oh no. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I knew it was happening, but it was like, you know, you know, twisted the knife all over again. No, I hear you, man. No, really Fletch. I always say Fletch and Jan Jones were like the first two DC people that like we're like we remember you you're hilarious and i'm like oh that's really nice of you remembering my god it's awesome. like you know a million other people out there that do what i do and that i never forgot that and I've, you know i've only become better friends with both of them so michael cooper says nameless is a wonderful book all on its own but has there been any interest from film or tv it's such a great concept uh there has been a little bit i haven't heard anything in uh in a while but it, it'll bubble up every once in a while so yeah I understand. Fingers crossed or, or uncrossed, whatever, <laughs> whatever you think. <laughs> with with uh, with Skybound and and working with Skybound and everything, how how has that been compared to other gigs? It's it's mostly the same. I mean, uh, okay. you know, I they send me a script and I draw it, but uh, the the money comes faster uh, with nice. Skybound for sure, which is nice. Uh, and then the. Cool thing is they've got all this, you know, all these, you know, various departments. So we got with the first issue, we got action figures, which is bonkers. Oh, that's great! Yeah, so uh, so that was that was pretty neat to have, you know, action figures of, uh, of uh, the two main characters in a like a couple different forms. They're like, you know, they're covered with blood form and like stealth form, so they're all wearing black and then like the normal like more GI Joe looking outfits. So that was pretty great. And then with or without like, nose, did they have, you know, did we thought about it, it was going to become. Uh, uh, cost prohibitive to have more than one head so we you know bailed on that idea but we, in, in our hearts <laughs> in our hearts you know i should probably you know i've, I've got a spare one i should just take a, a knife and you know <laughs> hilarious <laughs> do, yeah. do you custom uh do action figures at all no i i don't have the time for that i don't I understand no, no, yeah, I, 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 I wish when I, when I see the sort of thing that other people do i'm like oh please like i've, I've got some uh the thing I really want to do in my, you know, retirement or whatever, if my, you know, right hand falls off. Retirement. Go right, on. Right. I've got some, uh, some Star Wars uh, micro collection, like the little uh, die cast ones. Sure. From, like around the Empire Strikes Back era. So I had two of them when I was a kid. And just this year, like I, I was letting my son play with them and he absolutely loves it. And just like loves, you know, it's like you build the thing and then you hit the button and it explodes and you could build it back over. So he was awesome like plays with those better than he plays with anything uh so i bought you know i bought this one that i've literally wanted for like 40 years or whatever <laughs> I wanted this thing for my whole life uh and so it, i would like to somehow build that out and i always wanted the other empire strikes back ones but there's no backdrop and it looks kind of, kind of corny so i'd love to build like a whole you know diorama out of those things like that sounds cool. like a fantastic waste of time <laughs> <laughs> no, but it sounds like fun, man. And maybe that's a father son yeah. project. Yeah, yeah. When he, when, he's a, yeah. when he can hold an exacto blade or whatever, maybe we'll do that. Right. Absolutely. No, and honestly, I'm always uh, amazed when I hear about uh, cartoonists that are also 
make custom action figures. And it, like Artie Balthazar, I've known for years, has, has been doing it. But in, in the last couple of years, um, guys like Ibrahim Mustafa is a, oh, yeah. Like he's, and, yeah, he's crazy. He like sews stuff. He's nuts. Yes. And also, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I had never known that Derek Robertson does that. Oh, really? Oh, geez. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And he's like, yeah, here's an Indiana Jones that I custom made. And here's this. And I'm like... <laughs> And he does. He doesn't do Migo size. He does the big like shot sideshow. Good lord, size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed. Honestly, I, I think it's so cool. So Ramsey has another good question. The Judge Dread comic you did uh, was badass. Did you read much 2000 AD growing up? And was there any trepidations taking on such an iconic British character? I can't imagine there were any trepidations. I, I get trepidations over everything. Uh... <laughs> I, I was aware of Judge Dredd, but that was I didn't read too much of it uh, as a kid. I read like around when the, the movie came out, there was a, a series called Dread Rules and uh, Simon Beasley did the Dread uh, Batman crossover. Yeah. So I read j just a little bit of that, but I, was, I wasn't a Dread guy until I was like a pretty a fairly well-established pro. And I was, uh, I would just go through the, uh, it was when it was like during that phase where I was making money at conventions, but I also would have like a half hour of dead time in between uh, sketches or whatever. So I could walk around and waste money in a quarter bin. So I like, I bought up like all the American reprints of like all the 2000 AD stuff from the 80s. So I just, I had like all that stuff, you know, Sam Slade, ABC warriors, all that stuff. Uh, but so I was not a fan as a kid, but at, you know, at age 28 or whatever it was like, yeah, huge 2000 AD fan, uh, very nervous, uh, you know, being one of the first Americans to take over such a, you know, I, I drew the cover to like 1950 and the cover to 2080, 2000. Preposterous. Wow. Like, especially as an American to do that. Wow. Uh, I was <laughs> fucking Rich Johnston. Uh, I, was feeling, I was feeling pretty chuffed about it. Just, yeah. Uh, and he goes, uh, you realize you're not the first person they asked, right? I was like, well, I appreciate that, man. Of course. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know that you know they they asked uh, they asked Vin first. It's like, well, thanks, buddy. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out. Who who <laughs> they asked first, Vin? Uh, uh, Vin, uh, Frank Quitely. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah, know that's uh, that Vin is, is Vin Frank's uh, nickname. Uh, yeah, Vin, Vin Deegan's his real name. Yeah. Oh, I uh, see. Oh, I didn't realize little, that. Little, that's hilarious. Of course, it is. That's inside excellent. baseball for you. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Dude, <laughs> I thanks, honestly. Buddy. Thank you because you introduced me to Frank in New York 12 years ago, 10 oh, years right. ago, something like I that. that. Yeah, and it was great, man. And no, he, he's a sweetheart. It was really, it was terrific uh, getting to talk to him. And I should try and get him on a longer uh, conversation yeah, than we did I, on the floor. Yeah, I owe him, I owe him a page of art. We did a, uh, I, I was at his studio, I don't know, five years ago or something. And we did kind of a one way trade where I took a piece of his art and promised him that I'd give him one of mine. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. That's <laughs> all right. Buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm sure you'll. You know, I'm sure it'll happen. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Dennis says first memory of Chris's art was from Batman Incorporated. Indeed, love that issue of Man of Bats. Like everyone, I love Nameless. Any plans to do your own creator own books? Uh, uh yeah, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, I mean, ho hopefully one of these lifetimes I'll get around to you know doing something you know totally solo. Kind of it drives me a little bit, you know. You know, nuts. <laughs> you know, I did a uh, I did a four page story that came out in two thousand AD this year, I guess, or maybe maybe uh, maybe it's, no, I guess it was last year. Very okay. well received, like four page thing. I absolutely lost my mind doing it, but super good. I would love to do more. Was it a future shock? What was it? It, it was a it was a future shock. I uh, you know I, I I know the editors there. I was like, do I have to go through the whole? system or can i just like pitch something to you via email like they've got like a whole way that you're supposed to go about breaking into 2080 it's like do i have to do that or can we just like be cool about this and they're like yeah, just fire them on over so yeah i got to do a uh, four page future shock pretty good uh in color i feel like i was cheating a little bit because mo for, for me a future shock is supposed to be in black and white but i guess they've started doing them in color recently and uh shit i'm an asshole i, I don't remember the color's name but it was it looks beautiful it's awesome really you know it worked pretty well in black and white, but in color, it's it's amazing. You know why I don't remember the artist's name? They didn't send me comp copies, so. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> so <why>. yeah. 
<laughs> no, I understand. And I mean, you know, they, they certainly cut corners here and there and I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how does your, I mean, I would think, especially given your collaborators and stuff and the subjects that you cover, I would think your stuff plays very well internationally. Uh, it seems to, I mean, I don't know. I, I I've got, I've got, you know, Spanish, Italian and German and uh, German versions of most of my stuff on the shelf. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I, I've only been to Scotland for a con. That was that was great, but I've never been like I get invited all the time to like you know the continent or whatever. <laughs> but I could never. I've, I've always had kids the whole time, so it's just like it's just not feasible, really. Until they're you know, I, I, I missed I missed the window when they were young enough to just be like little slugs. Now they're now they're you know Tasmanian devil. So maybe when they're you know can you know old enough to sit still. I understand. Um... Ben says, I'm hoping you're going to work with Grant again, but honestly, I'll be checking out whatever you do. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> Absolutely. It. Absolutely. No, and it's honestly, man, it's it's great to see where your career has gone and the fact that you are in demand by by top writers and stuff. And obviously that gets in the way for you doing creator own stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, are, are, are you content in terms of, you know, where things have led as far as your career? Ah, uh, it's, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, it's, I mean, right now, I mean, this, this, this has been a, like a brutal, brutal pandemic year. Like I haven't, I haven't worked a full day, like a full, like a full, like, you know, eight, 10 hour day, whatever in like a year and a half or however long it's been. So that is just, that's, that's rough. And just like, uh, you know, trying to get into the, you know, typically I don't get into like the zone until you know, I'm four hours in. And that's like, that's, that's like when I have to call it quits now. So it's just been, it's, yeah, it's just ball uphill all day long. So, so this year's been rough, but uh, you know, all things considered, it's worked out. You know, I, I'm able to support a family of four on one comic artist. That's know, awesome. Buddy. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm not sucking it away at the moment right now. <laughs> but no, I understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. And you and your wife, I would imagine, are you? You know, having a you know, how, how old is your oldest kid? He is five. Okay. Yeah. So like kind of school stuff or no, or right. We, right now we do like zoom school, like, like, you know, iPad school or whatever for home. Sure. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm very, I've, you know, he's, he's, you know, signed up for kindergarten in the fall. Hopefully the world is, you know, back to normal enough that he can, you know, he can yeah. do that. Because I mean, I mean, expecting a five-year-old to sit still and do like, you know, reading homework or whatever. is just a fucking nightmare. Riley Brown. Yeah. He feels it. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, we we yeah. talked about this on Sunday, Riley. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I I get it, man, and I I feel for both of you. And you know, I, 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 it's easy for me to say, Uncle Buck, yeah, <laughs> sitting here enjoying my single life and everything, and yeah, smoking yeah. my cheap cigars, and absolutely, you know, yeah, being come a pain on down and change a diaper, bud. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, I remember with uh, Wad babysitting my little nieces and nephews when they were post diaper, but like, mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Johnny need help in the bathroom, and it's like. Okay. Uh, all right. Can't I'll do my just, best. Can you just, you know. And, and I came in and actually they were all done. I'm like, oh, you're a good kid. Um, nice. <laughs> you handle it yourself. Fantastic. Nice. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've been lucky. I haven't had to change a diaper yet. So. Oh, man. And uh, as I approach my as a pro, as I approach my senior years, it's like, all right. Oh, you know, bu maybe. Bullet dodged. Wow. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. So, too goddamn funny. Are you? Uh, have you been watching any of uh, the streaming nonsense? Do you have time to watch that stuff? Not, Obviously, with the kids, it might be hard. Yeah, but yeah, with the kids, it's hard. So not much. What's the last? I couldn't even tell you the last current-ish thing we watched. We watched a fair amount of Lovecraft Country. Cool. I, have, I haven't seen any of WandaVision or uh, okay. whatever the, whatever the other one's called. Winter Falcon. Soldier, yeah. yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah. Uh, and uh, and are you going to watch the Snyder Cut or not? I haven't even seen Man of Steel. Uh, oh. it's out like I, I, I definitely want to watch it just to like know what people are talking about, but I don't even have HBO Max, so it's just like I, I'll watch it when it hits you know, TBS or whatever. <laughs> sure, yeah, no, I get it. I, you know, honestly, I was not a big fan of, I mean, well, I, I should say, yeah, when, when Man of Steel came out, I was like, Neh. but uh, it kind of grew on me. Batman Superman, the director's cut was far superior than what we got in the theater, yeah, that's what I hear. Um, but the great thing is I would say about the Snyder cut of justice league is it really does tie all three movies together. So I would say, if you have an interest, I'd almost say at least watch right. the, the three 
um, you know, in a row just to appreciate the story a little bit more. Yeah. And, and I'm only halfway when I'm, through when I'm old. <laughs> I hear you. No, no, no. Dude, you know, there's a ton. The uh, 2013 was a weird year that a lot like Scott Pilgrim came out that year. Uh, the second Wolverine solo movie came out that year. And a bunch of the movies that I just didn't end up watching because mm -hmm. I kept hearing, eh, eh. And I'm like, well, if it's, yeah, maybe I don't want to see it. You know, I yeah. don't know. And uh, so, yeah, and there's a lot of them that I haven't come back to yet, for that matter. So, you know, I do I do appreciate everything that's been coming out on streaming. And I'm so happy for several of our friends and, you know, people like Mark Miller that, you know, he's got Jupiter's Legacy coming up. And, uh, you know, I, I love the boys. I think the, Man, boys, that's, the boys is the boy, I think the boys is the, the only big nerd show that I've actually like kept current on. Yeah, that show is amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, way better than way better than it's got any right to be. It's super good. I agree. Rucka's uh, movie, The Old Guard, was fantastic with Charlize Theron. It's just oh, a right. movie, but it's so it's you know, and I I'm a sucker for much as one of the reasons why I really enjoy Die 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 is because I love good espionage action, paramilitary shit, things mm -hmm. like that. You know, and Old Guard absolutely filled that itch as well. I mean, it was it was just fantastic. And I'm so glad it was as well received as it was as well. Yeah. You know, yes. another, oh, we also we did watch. Uh, is is Stumptown back? Uh, I don't know. We we watched the first. No, season you Stumptown. don't. Yeah, isn't it a shame? Uh, we're not gonna. I think it got canceled. God, ah, it's a bummer. I really like. Yeah, that yeah, I know. Um, and no, and they really understood what. I mean, you know, Greg Greg was consulting. He wasn't part of the day to day operation, but he definitely was consulting, and they clearly paid attention to the book. Yeah. It, it it reminds me of when um, ABC had Human Target for those two seasons, and it's like this is actually a good story. And and you know another show like that currently on uh, CW, Black Lightning is so true to the original comic, and it blows my mind. And I just I'm like I remember sadly being old enough, I remember yeah. reading Black Lightning <laughs> when it was first coming out, and especially that first season. I'm just like Pfft. I'm like the last thing I expected was such an accurate. Black Lightning story, yeah. and it's it's great. And William Cress is is so perfect as uh, Jeff Pierce. It's it's fantastic. So yeah, I'm, I'm a massive fan of that. Um, only watched the first ten minutes of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier so far, but I liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've, <laughs> I've just been too busy. They yeah. really ever since uh, Snyder Cut came out. Like I said, I'm only two hours into it, and uh, it's easy to put down almost like a book, right? Because there are so many long action scenes. That mm -hmm. it's like I don't have to sit down and strap it for you know four hours. It's like oh, I'm like yeah. I don't have that kind of time. Come on, <laughs> right? So I can I do I like catch twenty minutes here, twenty minutes there, things like that. I'm doing the same thing with Falcon. I'm enjoying Superman and Lois, the CW show. It's nice to see a real a good Superman. Yeah, I, I'm I'm depression at, at this point. I think I'm years behind on all the CW stuff. We I was a big fan of all of it, and then at, at some point, I think with the second kid, it's just like we we fell off everything. I understand. Um, I'm, I'm, is, I'm up on my story bots in Dino Ranch, though. <laughs> I was going to ask: Is is the five year old is uh, is he into uh, superhero stuff? Uh, yeah, he. Uh, we let him watch. I mean, not not too much. We're we're fairly sensitive to you know violence and whatnot. There's sure. a there's some a Lego Avenger series that are kind of set like like adjacent to the like the Marvel movies. Have you yeah, seen I've seen them. Those yeah. are awesome. Like they're yeah, like, they're fun. Yeah, it carries it all right through. Ah, uh, yeah, he's he's totally into that, and we let him watch the, uh, I think it's called Marvel Marvel Adventure Spider Man, which is like the like Spider Man for kids for like three minutes long. Sure, he's big, he's big into that, so now he knows who basically everyone in the Marvel universe is like down to you know reptile or whatever. <laughs> he's like super obscure characters, <laughs> pretty good. Fegley is uh, joining us, Kyle Fegley, everybody. Hey. Uh, another guy who I missed. <laughs> who we <he> haven't. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he's like, who could possibly watch all these shows, especially the kids? We only watch Bluey. I I would love to watch Bluey. It's a beautifully animated, really attractive show. The kids have no interest in it. it makes me so mad. Yeah, big into Trash Truck though on Netflix. Okay, all right, <laughs> Kyle. If you haven't watched Trash Truck, uh, we're we're all big fans. <laughs> the good to know. That's fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Jeez. Um, oh, also, uh, uh, Chris Moreno was a. Is the art director on uh, Muppet Babies, and uh, my kids got totally, totally hooked on Muppet Babies. And Moreno was furious with me for years because my kids had like 
no interest. Like I try and they're just like, ah, screw them up with babies. And I was like, sorry, bro. Uh, but now they're into it. And I would, you know, it, it was neat to see episodes that I, you know, I, I would hear him. Although I think he's under NDA. So I heard him definitely not talking. about. <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't talked to Moreno for a long time. And it's like, yeah. oh, if, if he can't talk, I understand. God, that, yeah. I, that, that's like Alan Heinberg writing the Wonder Woman movies. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, come back. He's like, I, I can't. And I'm yeah. like, ah, oh. and he goes, NDAs, man. I'm like, make right. your money. It's all yeah. right. <laughs> right. It's all right. We'll talk 20 years from now when it's no longer valid. It's all right. That's okay. Yeah. I, I, so. I got fairly obsessed with watching, uh, you know, Nanny gets her, her, you know, she doesn't have a head in the show. Uh, hearing Moreno <laughs> talking about, you know, how they dealt with headless Nanny. It's all I can watch when I'm watching the show is just like, watching for like the shadow of her head to try and imagine what her face looks like. Very, <laughs> very fun little counter narrative when you've seen this, you know, same episode six times. You're just like, what can I possibly pay attention to to, to keep myself from going crazy? I don't remember if we ever talked about the experience you had with Officer Down becoming a movie. Uh, it was a <laughs> yeah. Tell me, it was you a, know, a learning experience. Uh oh, <laughs> sounds like a guarded answer. All it, right, it was uh, it was a very guarded answer. Uh, I, I I really had the full uh, alpha and omega of the uh, the whole universe there for a couple of days. Uh, I will say this at the the premiere, uh, my best buddy from growing up and like, uh, you know, some of my best buddies from LA and one, a couple of my best buddies from Chicago all kind of came together and were, you know, we all watched the movie together. So that was like, it was kind of a, a, this is your life experience. Pretty great. Uh, Yeah. Let's, let's leave it on the positive. All right. Fair enough. (laughs) Fair enough. Is, is, uh, are things cool with you and Joe? Do you think you'd work on new stuff with Joe in the future? Oh uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've, I haven't talked to him since uh, since we moved uh, to KC. We, uh, I mean, whenever whenever we would see each other at Grant's, uh, you know, Grant's wife's birthday every year, and oh, we, nice. we, we shop at the same uh, comic store uh, in in LA, House of Secrets. Uh, so we, you know, run into each other and you know, shoot the shit about uh, you, know, you know family and whatever. And I, we were we were pregnant with the second kid and hadn't told anyone, and. Joe was like, you're not having a second one, are you? And we're, I was like, well, he's like, it's like treading water and people just keep handing you bricks. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he's just like, it's just going and going on what a nightmare it is. And I was just like, well. Oh, great. Guess, thanks. Well, thanks, buddy. <laughs> God, I, I hadn't talked to him because I hadn't seen him at conventions or whatever for years. And when that uh, single issue that he did last year for Image came out, or right before it was going to come out, it was right before the pandemic, uh, he's like, hey, let's talk. I'm like, yeah, man. And I'm like, God damn it. It was great talking to him. I had, Like I said, I, we, we did a lot in the early years of Word Balloon. But, mm-hmm. you know, again, I just I, I know he got busy. But, God damn, I, had, I just had a wonderful talk with him. And I really appreciate where he is in his career and his observations on comics and you know, animation and everything right now. Yeah. So, yeah. He's a smart, he's a smart guy for sure. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you, man. Absolutely. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, I'm looking at uh, other, other possibilities. It's funny. I was running that uh, Alex Ross commercial before we got started with all the FF stuff. Mm-hmm. And again, one of my favorite things he did back in the day, and this shows you how long it was ago was uh, your uh, your 70th Marvel uh, anniversary. Oh, man. That, stuff. Was, that was a good one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you, you kind of retold the first uh, conflict between Submariner and uh, the original Human Torch. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. I uh, I was very disappointed when they didn't really hire me for you know quite a while after that. Like, I thought I totally nailed it. I did, but too. In, in retrospect, uh, they gave me, like, a pretty long deadline, and I took every last nanosecond of it. Cause I was working, you know, like I was, you know, doing design work for the theater company. And I was also, uh, you know, like a, at the time I was a full-time graphic designer. And so you know, like, you know, I was just doing the Marvel stuff at night. It's just like this, even though this is my dream gig, like I can't like drop everything and do it. Cause I know exactly, you know, what it's like when you, you know, put your heart into things. It's like, great, you know, here's your money for one, you know, one gig, you know, we'll talk to you next year. It's just like, I got, I got a bunch of other balls I got to keep in the air. So I took every last nanosecond of uh, <laughs> time on that deadline 
and uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, Brevoort wasn't into that. But yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't do any Marvel work for like years after that. After what I thought was like a, like a real breakthrough, awesome comic was just like, yeah, cr crickets. What are you gonna do? It all, it all worked out. <laughs> no, I get it, man. And your and your art style has certainly changed since those those days mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So I can appreciate that. But no, I, I, like I said, it was one of my favorite things back in the day that you did. Has this year of COVID made you consider other? Uh, avenues to do comics in the same way that like, you know, Brubaker has been playing with panel syndicate and, you know, uh, other digital platforms, or would you consider crowdfunding or anything like that for any special, uh, or you, you obviously haven't needed to because you've had right. steady work. Uh, I look at the people doing it. And I, I'm a little, I don't think I could mentally handle it. Like just the, like the, the way people have to like totally like turn, you know, uh, plugging their Kickstarter into like such a full-time job. And it's just like, so like their success or failure is just right out there. I don't think I could handle it. Like, I think it would drive me crazy. Like I remember back in the, uh, uh, in the torrenting days, uh, you know, I'd be downloading uh, episodes of Fist of the North Star in French or whatever. Sure. And I'll be <laughs> trying to, I'll be <laughs> literally in French. Uh, I'd be like trying to draw comics and like every 10 minutes I'd go back in there just to hit, hit refresh. It's like, oh, it's up to 11.5%. You know, go you know, draw comics for 10 more minutes. So let's check again. Oh, oh, we're up to 12. Like, what are you doing? I think it would drive me crazy. Uh, but I, I, I somewhat admire the people who can do it, but I also find it very annoying that I, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm complicit in the failure of people that fail at it in a way that I find very annoying. All if, right, that makes, <laughs> if that makes sense. But, you know, Ryan Brown's very good at it and, you know, good for Brownie's him. amazing in it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, Brownie and uh, Palmiati, guys like mm -hmm. that, I really, they've got it down to a science. Yeah. So it's I, pretty I, cool. If, if I was going to do it, I feel like I would need to, you know, hire someone to, uh, to do the, uh, you know, to do the smart stuff for me. I Which, understand. We would, there's just like a whole cottage industry of, you know, people that do that. So 100%. I would, I would have, yeah. yeah. I would have to go that route. No, I get it. Absolutely. Michael wants to know uh, which artists inspire you. Uh, uh, Jack Kirby's inspired me a lot now. I've been, I've been reading a lot of old uh, old Marvel stuff recently, especially when he's inked by my favorite, Dick Ayers. Phil Hester, you don't know what you're talking about. Dick Ayers is the greatest. <laughs> I love I That's hilarious. I have a Dick Ayers sketch of that brief period of Iron Man when the faceplate had the points on the top. Uh-huh. And I and Dick Ayers early two thousands was at a show and I'm like you know can you draw that he's like oh yeah no problem so it's one of my favorite things that I have is an original Dick Ayers awesome that's cool absolutely and no, there's, I, a, there's a there's a new thing every day that uh, you know that inspires me to look at I mean I'm, I was reading uh, the Walt Simonson uh, Manhunter for the Cabillion of time but though I, I I haven't sat down to actually read it in I mean it's got to be eight years or something so I so good. It's amazing. It's it is amazing how much story they pack into those weird little chapters. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And again, there's another book that, again, being old enough, I remember when it was coming out, and it was oh, just wow. like. <laughs> and I mean, that's the great thing, man. No, eight pages a chapter, and so much story in those eight pages. Absolutely. Yeah. And then fi the final issue was a full length right. story and everything. Um, uh, Wayne wants to know any chance of a bat cow story in. The new Legends of the Dark Knight digital series that's coming out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's it's totally possible. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm I I will I am not working on it right now. That's a great idea. I'm friends with Ben Abernathy. I'm sure is I'm I'm sure he's in charge. Uh, yeah, th th that's one email away from happening. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be great. No, you know, and I talked to Derek about you know he's he's launching. Uh, the new Legends of the Dark Knight series and everything with with the multi chapter story. Oh, cool. So so yeah, no, I'm I know I'm thr I'm thrilled it's back. I'm I'm thrilled that book is back. It's it was always one of my favorite Batman things, and also mm -hmm. especially because you get a lot of uh, not typical um, creative teams mm -hmm. doing stories, and man, they had some great uh, stories that came out of England. And I, I, I can't specify right now, but also Chris Gage did some great legend stories. Of mm -hmm. course, Danny O'Neill, when he would come back to it, always had something new to say about Batman and his and his stories. You know, and the art was always really neat too. Yeah. So very much so, very much so. 
Well, uh, Die, Die, Die is uh, wrapping up its second volume. Are you guys moving right ahead to volume three, or are you going to take we a break? Are, uh, I am uh, taking a break to do uh, some things that I cannot talk about, but uh, you know, we are – yeah, you know, we are we are planning our uh, rambunctious return, <laughs> rambunctious triumphant, whatever. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're planning out what volume three is gonna you know sound like. Do you guys have the story mapped out? How many how many chapters do you think you'll do, or is it depending on the market? I I think it depends on the market and it would, however, like what what the world looks like. So this so, uh, I mean the crazy uh, you know the crazy nonsense that happened that's happened in the real world is really you know, made the tone of die, die, die seem really strange in retrospect. Like we had the, uh, you know, that scene with all the proud boys or whatever going across the bridge. And that was like, that was drawn like, uh, I don't know, like months before the, uh, you know, the you know, assault on the Capitol or whatever. And when I drew it, it seemed fairly ridiculous. And now it's just like, this is just like, this is just real life. Like this isn't even like outrageous at all anymore. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know. the the whole The whole tone of the book has has drastically shifted since the world has really taken a shit on itself. <laughs> no, I can appreciate that. The other guy that, uh, and forgive me, uh, the co plotter of the book, Scott Gimple. Yeah, yeah. So, did Scott have the original idea? Did he and Robert? How did, how did they get so, together? So, Scott Scott is or was I can't I can't remember what his you know, current status on The Walking Dead is. He he is or was the showrunner of the the Walking Dead TV show. So he and Robert like conceived of the idea together, and then uh, <laughs> for the like they they basically like plotted the thing out together, and then they were planning on like you know really like co-writing it together, and that just didn't that just didn't end up happening. So basically, like, like they came up with a story together, and then Robin Robin Robert does like the meat and potatoes actual you know scripting of it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, but he's still part of it. He is still part of the plotting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, his, his his name's on the cover. He better be. <laughs> All right. I figured. You know. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, and uh, David wants to know uh, what was the sing first he because he corrected himself. What was the comic you that you read that mm -hmm. made you fall in love with the medium? Uh I mean, it was more how to draw comics the Marvel way. Uh, my my aunt my aunt Barbie got it for me when I was. You know, five years old or something. And that's what really made me fall in love with it. And like, I basically wasn't reading comics at that point. I just like, liked that book. Cause it was like a cartoon that stood still. Uh, at, some, at some point after that, uh, after that, I started getting comics kind of scattershot, but uh, the one that really you know hooked me was Avengers 274, the, uh, the death of Hercules, uh, uh, Roger Stern, John Buscema, Tom Palmer issue. So good. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was doing like a you know, Greek mythology in school or whatever. So like, it was just like absolutely perfect timing. And John Buscema is the how to draw comics guy. And I was just like, this is the guy. And uh, I mean, his art never looked better. Absolutely amazing. And like Hercules dies. And like, to me as a nine-year-old or whatever, it was just like, it was like the wire or, uh, you know, wh whatever your favorite TV show is now. Like it's, it seemed like some real, real shit. I can appreciate that. When you're talking about, you know, how Kirby is currently influencing you and stuff, back in the day it seemed like Jeff Darrow was a clear influence on oh, yeah, for sure. stuff. Yeah. What a, what a nightmare influence to have. <laughs> I love Jeff Darrow's just like, hey, would you like to spend longer on your pages? <laughs> That's true. Lots of detail. There, there lot, lots and lots of detail. Yeah. Absolutely. So when the two of you were in Chicago, did you have time to pick his brain and uh, chat about oh, stuff? Uh, a little bit. He was mad when we moved because we uh, – we had just like, we just like started going to lunch together and like hanging out and like, we'd had like, I'm kind of a I don't know, abrasive personality sometimes. And like, I, I, I presume, uh, I presume familiarity with people. Uh, and he was not, he was not into it. Uh, and so oh. it took, it took us a couple of years to, uh, to, to iron out, uh, you know, me being, you know, annoying <laughs> or whatever. Okay. But like, but uh, right, right as we were like figuring out that we actually liked each other, I was like, "Well, I'm packing up and moving." And he was, ah. <laughs> he was a little annoyed by that. But I, I, I enjoy seeing him at, at conventions. You know, every, I mean, we used to, I used to see, but basically it was just San Diego. But now, I mean, who the hell knows? I think he lives in France now. I don't know. He does, and I, that's what surprised me. Sal Abinati told me, and he's like, "Oh, you know, Jeff moved back to France," and I'm like, "Ah, oh, man." You know, because, yeah, yeah I, I always enjoyed t seeing him at shows and stuff and talking to him. And, uh, you know, God, watching his daughter grow up, my God, and now she's a budding artist and everything. That's so weird. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. It only, dude, I, as someone, you know, a little further down on the line and stuff, it only gets uh -huh. weirder as you get older. And you think about your friend's kids and it's like, mm -hmm. I remember when you were in diapers and now you're a young woman. That's yeah. insane. So, yeah. No, yeah. No, it's, I get it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm often seeing pictures of my older son, like old pictures of him, and he looks very much like my younger one. And I'm like, wait, which one? Which one are you? And I have to look for like context clues, <laughs> like over at that park. There must be the big one. <laughs> That's insane. I like it though. Magic K wants to know what is the status quo for Arkham Asylum 2? Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get around to it at some point. But the, the last time I talked to Grant, he was uh, no longer uh, interested in it. What are you going to do? Yeah, no, I understand. No, it seems like working with DC right now is definitely in the rearview mirror for uh, for Grant. So, although he they, they just announced he's they are doing um, Superman and the Authority with uh, Mikkel Janin, if I'm saying that right. Oh wow! So so maybe uh, you know, maybe Grant's back. Maybe 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 this is a lie. Maybe Arkham Asylum Two is back on, and I don't even know it. If if they do it with, I'm not even gonna say it out loud. I'm not gonna bring that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna bring that into the, the universe. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's an interesting combination. I'm I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Janine's. Yeah, I think I think he's amazing. I mean, I've obviously been paying attention to what he's done with uh, King, and everything. So yeah, yeah that was very, that yeah, was my amazing. introduction to him. Yeah, yeah, really cool stuff, dude. As always, great great hangout and yeah, die die die. Uh, yeah, we did it. Fourteen. The fourteen is out uh, tomorrow, and then the uh, collected volume two comes out in April. Right, and I'm and then we'll very be. Yeah, and we'll be uh, scanning the news sites to find out what's uh, next for Chris Burnham. Yeah, I, th I think, I don't know. It's good. It's it's good so far. <laughs> I hope people like it. I'm working hard. That's that's all I know these days is I'm working hard. Whether it's good or not, it's, it's not up to me. Well, you look good, man. And I and again, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that uh, we're seeing each other via distance. But uh, like I said, I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm hoping that. You know, sooner than later, we'll uh, we'll we'll be face to face again. Soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. I hope so. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Get get stuck, buddy. <laughs> get stuck. I will. I will try to get stuck. All right. Fair enough. Be All no. Right. Great seeing you, man. Take it yeah, easy. Good to see you. Have a good night. You too, Chris Burnham. Everybody. I hope you enjoyed yeah, the yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got other cool stuff coming uh, up. Uh, oh, thank you, Don Lenza. Don Lenza says awesome conversation. Thank you very much, man. Uh, Don Lenza, you can tell from his Rocky Marciano avatar, big fight fan. I should mention that uh, the guys from Ringside Seat will be joining me on Thursday night to talk boxing and uh, catch up on uh, the sport and also sadly acknowledge the uh, passing of Marvin Hagler, uh, a great uh, middleweight and one of my favorites of all time. But also uh, tomorrow night, Sanford Green will be joining me, hopefully on an All Yak uh, podcast with Art and Franco and everybody. So, because he loves that show, which cracks me up that Sanford is wasting his time <laughs> watching it. <laughs> nice. What can I say, man? Exactly, you know. But uh, seriously, as always, uh, thank you, Chris. 